Did Dennis Gates just out coach Rick Barnes? You know what? I think Dennis Gates just out coach Rick Barnes and the Missouri players out executed Tennessee down the stretch. What an incredible basketball game. I don't think I got a great podcast for you coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more by visiting FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And you know what? I'm going to start by questioning my friends over at FanDuel. I tried, guys. I tried to warn you. I tried to warn you that your odds on Missouri were way off. And in fact, I said that when the Tigers were 25-1 to to win the SEC tournament. But did you listen to me? No. In fact, you spit in my face and raised it up to 30-1. to And then yet, even after yesterday, after more teams were eliminated, of course, Missouri officially having to play Tennessee, well, what did that mean? Even more disrespect of my Missouri Tigers. 36 to 1 to win the tournament as of this morning. Well, I got to think those odds are going to be looking a little bit better, don't you think? After this huge victory by Missouri over Tennessee. Ah, FanDuel, tisk tisk. No more disrespect from you. I just don't want to see it. But in all seriousness, though, There's no doubt in my mind that the Tigers did think they were disrespected coming into this game. Whether they were or they won't, or they were not, by the coach of the year stuff, the defensive player of the year stuff, heck, maybe it was the preseason picks. I don't know. Maybe they're looking at their their bracket projections as well. But I'm telling you, you could see a little something extra. Whether it was just the Tigers really wanting to prove something to beat Tennessee again on a neutral floor without, you know, a semi-lucky shot at the end of the game. One way or the other, when Kobe Brown threw down that aggressive dunk in the first half, I'm not sure I've ever seen him yell that aggressively after a play in his four years as a Tiger. So that was really fun to see, and I thought it really set the tone for not only Missouri, but almost for the entire basketball game. There is no doubt in my mind whatsoever. I think anybody watched that game would tell you this. Both those teams wanted that game badly. And that can only mean good things, I would think, for Missouri preparing them for the intensity that they're going to see in the NCAA tournament. And not only that, Missouri won today what was a highly highly physical contest. And Missouri is not known as a physical basketball team. Obviously, one of the worst, if not the worst, offensive rebounding and just rebounding in general teams among the high major conference competitors. Well, multiple times today, again, talk about setting the tone. I thought Kobe Brown had some absolute man-sized and important rebounds today. You know, again, a highly physical game against the best statistical defense in the country, that's really impressive. And for Missouri to get 79 points while they were doing it by getting off to a pretty rough start in the first half as well, that's a legit, unbelievable performance by Gates and by every member of the team. Obviously, Demoy Hodge and Kobe Brown were unbelievable. Nick Honor was great down the stretch. What a clutch shot he hit. That's sort of become his calling card lately down the stretch of the season here. And by the way, if you do, if you're a Tennessee fan and you're saying, well, yep, yeah, we have a great defense, but we miss Zakai Ziegler. And I do think Tennessee miss Zakai Ziegler. Is it Ziegler or Ziegler? Either way, Dolph Ziegler, as I like to call him. No, for real. Zakai Ziegler, heck of a player, have all the respect for him in the world. In my humble opinion, though, Tennessee missed him 
much more on the offensive end of the court than they did defensively. To me, Tennessee looked every bit the best defensive team in the country, especially in the first half, but second half, Missouri was just a little bit too good. And at times, it took excellent three-point shooting and, of course, execution by Missouri. And as, as Jimmy Dykes pointed out on the broadcast, it just seemed like every time there was a break in the action, a timeout, Dennis Gates just had the perfect answer. And again, give his players a ton of credit too. Give those experienced Missouri seniors like Hodge and Honor, East, Brown, everybody else, give them all credit for executing exactly what he wanted. Really impressive basketball. And again, I got to tip my hat to Tennessee as well. I was kind of tongue in cheek there saying Dennis Gates out coached Rick Barnes as if Rick Barnes was bad or something. No, I just thought Dennis Gates was was unbelievable and obviously deserves a ton of credit, but I, I'm not trying to dunk on Tennessee whatsoever, figuratively speaking, because they're a tremendous basketball team. Viscovi was unbelievable. Man, he's one of the most fun guys to watch in the league and has been for years now in my humble opinion. So just the fact that Missouri could pull through and win this type of game, especially after the first few minutes of the second half, it really started feeling like, oh no, Missouri Missouri already has what? Six fouls in the first seven minutes here. It started to feel an awful lot like the second half of the game in Knoxville where Missouri had a gigantic lead that just kept, well, I shouldn't say gigantic, say a 17-point lead, I believe, that eventually just kept whittling down and whittling down and whittling down. But fortunately, I thought Missouri, yeah, sure, there was definitely some officiating that I complained about in the basketball game, but I think the biggest difference between this and Knoxville was just Missouri responded much better to Tennessee's physical brand of defense than it did in Knoxville. There's just no question about it. This is a team to me that grew up a little bit. Even though they won that game in Knoxville, this is to me an even more impressive victory. So congratulations to the Tigers. Congratulations to Dennis Gates. And once again, I'm just happy to see how much this game meant to both programs and to both squads. Because obviously in recent years, There's been a bit of a de-emphasis, I suppose, on the conference tournaments, but a great crowd in Nashville, a bigger crowd than I was expecting, really, before an afternoon game there in Nashville. So all good stuff. Now Missouri moves on to the SEC tournament finals for the first time, the semifinals, I should say, for the first time in its history, obviously taking on a big-time scary Alabama team tomorrow scary in more ways than one. You know what I mean? Okay. That was a terrible joke, but it was just sitting right there. What, what do you want from me? But in all seriousness, can't wait for that game tomorrow. Believe it kicks off tips off. I should say tomorrow at noon. And obviously once again, I'll have my post game thoughts for you as quickly as possible. And with about 44 seconds left in the ball game, Sean East after Well, both he and Honor were getting double teamed. East tried his signature left-handed cross-court pass, hung in the air for seemingly an eternity, only for Demoy Hodge to come down with the football, as it were. Well, you know what? I want to talk about that particular play and obviously what it meant to Missouri. But first, let's talk about FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is past us, and that means now's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. New customers, you get a new a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars. That's bonus bets back. If your first bet doesn't win, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and easy to use. You can bet on everything from money lines to point scores to three-pointers made. And you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss your chance for a no-sweat first bet. Up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel dot com slash locked on that's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more make every moment more with fanduel an official sports betting partner of the nba thanks for making locked on mizzou your first listen every day and be sure to check out the locked on newsletter 
And it's very customizable. Give you everything you need, nothing you don't. Sign up, check out everything, all your options, leagues, local teams, the whole whole deal. It's lockedonpodcast.com slash newsletters or scan the QR code that's on your screen if you're watching on YouTube. And, of course, once again, it's, not, it's worth repeating. Just really excellent execution by Mizzou in clutch situations, as well as timeouts, not only today, but, but all year, really. That's been one reason why I think maybe the metrics don't like Missouri, maybe as much as we Missouri fans do, because sometimes there's this idea, and, and it is accurate over, over the bigger scale, yeah, the more close games you win, well, over the long term, that's going to kind of even out. Unless, unless you execute incredibly, incredibly well, like Missouri seems to do offensively at the end of these games, especially down the stretch here at the end of the season. Well, there was one moment, still Missouri, with the shot clock in play, they got to get a shot up, they're winning the game. Well, I thought... Rick Barnes did a smart thing, came out with the double team, made Missouri try to try to speed them up, get them to take a quicker shot. But at the same time, I kind of thought through that double team, especially when Honor first broke it to the left side rather easily earlier in the possession, I thought the Tigers should have been a little bit more aggressive there trying to attack. But obviously it worked out. East tries his signature pass, that sort of hook pass with his left arm over the defense to the opposite corner. But of course, well, he didn't quite get it to the corner and that ball hung in the air forever. Like it was a sky punt, like a coffin corner type punt or something instead of a pass to the corner. Well, Demoy Hodge jumped up, high pointed the thing as Jimmy Dyke said, like a good wide receiver. And that's exactly what happened. Out physicaled him for the ball. Seemed like it was a foul in real time, but actually in retrospect, Dennis Gates had tried to call a timeout when East had the basketball. Wasn't immediately granted, but was granted when Hodge ended up with possession of the ball. That's not really a situation I've ever seen very often, but I, I think that's probably the right call ultimately. It seemed like it should have been a foul, but for as many complaints as I had on Twitter about the officiating live at Locked On Mizzou, that moment I thought, well, that was probably actually the right call. If you're going to call timeout there, well, I guess I got to give you the timeout. Now, again, I think you could actually argue that Missouri won the game just as much Actually, from to me, the 12-minute mark to the 8-minute mark of the second half, because in that four minutes or so, actually maybe even closer to five-plus minutes, Missouri did not commit a foul. And because they didn't do so, they allowed the games, the, the game stayed in rhythm for the Tigers. It wasn't a parade to the free throw line that we so often see when a team gets in the bonus early. And even though with eight minutes left, Tennessee still led by three, it just felt like maybe Missouri had a little bit of more gas left in the tank considering the Volunteers had played the night before. Those back-to-back -back games, especially, hey, another afternoon tilt that doesn't happen very often in college basketball can throw you off a bit, but at the same time, I thought the Volunteers were, were very game in the basketball game. They were just about as good offensively in the second half as Missouri but the Tigers were just a little bit better. And coming up on this program, of course, under normal circumstances, high school players, five-star high school players, I should clarify, from North Carolina. Well, there's some pretty prominent programs they tend to go to, right? North Carolina, Duke, maybe even NC State or Wake Forest. But hey, what if I told you Missouri has a chance at that type of guy under some unusual circumstances, if they happen next season. So let's talk about that. But first, I want to tell you about Built Bar because when you're looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all the usual sugar and calories you get from your impulse aisle, well, then you got to try Built Bar. We got through the holidays. We're past it. We're almost through thanks, or excuse me, St. Patrick's Day. So pool season's getting here, folks. 
We want to look good. We want to be healthy. Those two things kind of go together, right? But occasionally you need a treat. That's why you need Built Bars, which are covered in 100% real chocolate. Check them out at Built.com, Sam's, or Walmart. My absolute favorite is anything involving coconut. But hey, you can get all kinds of variety boxes. Figure out what you like best and then keep getting the variety or get your favorite. It's all up to you at Built.com, Sam's, or Walmart. Try out Built Bar and thank me later. So Jaron Stevenson, a six foot 10, 200 pound power forward from Pittsburgh, North Carolina. Apparently a five-star type player, not necessarily a, a one and done type player, but a very, very high-level McDonald's All-American type prospect regardless. Well, obviously, more often than not, that type of guy is going to stay in on Tobacco Road in the home state. And in fact, if I had to guess, if he's going to be in the 2024 class, well, the Tar Heels are probably the team to beat. But it sounds like there's a decent chance that Jaron Stevenson could reclassify a la John Tay uh, Porter. Excuse me. Remember when John Tay Porter was able to reclassify, finish high school a year early, and join his brother Michael for his one season in Columbia? Well, it sounds like Jaron Stevenson may be taking a similar path as John Tay Porter. And if so, it sounds like Missouri may be a likely landing spot. Not saying it's definite by any stretch of the imagination. But that seems like it's getting more and more likely by the second. So obviously with Missouri knowing that they're losing Trey Gomillion, DeAndre Golston, and also Demoy Hodge next year, a lot of the roster is still up up for grabs. I think Isaiah Mosley and Kobe Brown are probably the biggest question marks on the roster right now of, in terms of who may or may not come back. I think the rest of the guys, a lot of them are probably likely. Caleb Brown is going to depend on Kobe probably too. So, but obviously you add Jaron Stevenson to the mix there. Well, suddenly it's not looking like a rebuilding year so much for Dennis Gates next year, but honestly, considering what Gates did next year, I don't know that I'm ready to call or at least assume that any season for Missouri is going to be a rebuilding one at Mizzou arena. But you know what? Hey, thanks for joining me here on Locked on Mizzou today. Once again, be sure to check out the Locked on newsletter, lockedonpodcast.com slash newsletters. And I'm going to get out of here just a couple minutes early today. Got to check out my daughters as my wife leaves me in the lurch to go get Botox. Ah, 2023. Good times. So until next time, I am John Miller, and this has been Locked on Mizzou.